Well, it's a beautiful good evening. It's um, seven o'clock. And I've been fiddling about for this long hour. <laughs> Which won't work for me. So, um, oh, do I really want to talk about this? Probably not. Because it's been, it's kind of given me several hours of sheer frustration. I think I have to get a new spark plug. So I've taken the spark plug out and, um, yeah, I should take that along to, I shall take that along tomorrow to the garage and see, see if that's going to work. <laughs> but look at the blue of the sky. You see, there's always a compensation. When, when you step outdoors, immediately there's a compensation. So, hmm, where shall I begin? Well, um, I was watching Monty Don, and I've got to say, I, I'm convinced now that the BBC researchers um, have Beelzebub Cottage as one of their research channels because so much of what I say in my videos has been repeated by Monty Don. <laughs> he has said today, well, the 16th of May it was, um, uh, he was talking about um, hostas, dividing hostas. He says, oh, you know, break the rules and see what happens. Well, that's been kind of my mantra here for the past 15 years. All I've done is broken rules to see what happens. But, hey, I'm going to take you on a little walk. We're going to walk through the gardens. It's such a beautiful evening and there's just so much colour and there's so much movement because of the wind and the sky is so blue and the boy needs a walk. So... I'm just going to dilly and dally all over the place. Lots of new growth coming up on the beautiful bamboo. And um, this is fantastic because, of course, it's, it's, it's beautiful, you know, when the wind catches it. It's just gorgeous. I love that. And here we have some gorgeous flowers now coming out on this very... Um, struggling. It struggled for years and years and years, this little rhododendron. And it struggled with a huge amount of um, this stuff around it. I'll think of the name in a minute. Um, yeah. But doesn't it look beautiful? Those flowers are just luminous. Let's see if I can get a wee close up of the flower. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Here's one that's just opening. It's got that beautiful wee pattern just on the upper petal. Lovely. It kind of goes from dark then to sort of a, a pale green. It looks like a little lizard or something. So I planted that rhododendron, it must be, it must be 14 or 15 years ago and it really has struggled. I mean I sort of gave up the ghost in it a few times, I thought oh no it's not going to survive um, because rhododendrons like acid soil and this isn't acid soil. But I think with all the chop and drop, I think that there's a certain amount of Acidity may be built up in the soil now. However, it appears to be doing well because it's flowering beautifully. Hmm. So 
So the bees have been very busy on the Katoni Aster here because I'm looking at little little berries forming. You can just see the beginnings of little berries there. And um, what did I do with the soot from the chimney? Well, I've put it into three different compost heaps. So I've sort of spread it and then I've spread stuff on the top of it. So it'll all be recycled in a way. Apparently soot can be very good for the garden. But I, I wouldn't put that on directly because of the creosote in it. But the compost heap should break it down quite well. Masses and masses of black currants. What can I say about these black currants? They're just... It's, you know, a black currant bush is the plant that keeps giving. So I'm going to take you down through the fairy wood. Um, we'll go down this way. This is one of the little secret paths that's rarely trodden. And I'll show you this little, this little fairy thorn here. Look at what's growing, or what is in it that's, the tree is growing around. That's a little, tiny little gin bottle, I think. So, years and years and years ago, before I ever came here, someone put these bottles in the tree. Can't get that out now, look. It's a very Irish thing to do. <laughs> Some little steps here. See? And this is a little stone wall that I built years and years ago. Of course now it's all beautifully shaded in. We'll go down this way. Look at this massive, massive fern. Look, there's my hand beside it. So you can see it's huge. And there's still little primroses. Oh, hang on, there's Jack. <laughs> There's still little primroses flowering down here because it's quite cool down in the fairy wood. You know, there's a definite change in temperature. Anyone who's um, anyone who's been here will will know that. Now I'm welcoming um, I'm welcoming a few guests in June, and they're of course family members. And um, I was just looking back at photographs from their last visit, which was this time last year. And you know there's been a huge change here in the gardens, obviously because of the growth, but also because of things like this. Now, am I getting all that in into view? Um, I did a fair bit of clearing here and opened this area up a little bit in order to let the light through to certain trees and there's a lot of baby ash trees growing here but the ferns really have taken over so you've got this wonderful kind of fernery going on here you can see here and then I was talking with my eldest daughter and we were both remembering back to 2004, when I moved in to be out in the cottage and started all the work, and um, she said, Mum, that there wasn't a fern. There wasn't one fern here. 
because that was something that we talked about and I said oh you know I'll go to a woodland and I'll dig up a little fern and I'll plant it in here because I know that um, the seeds uh, come come on on the back of the beautiful fronds you know the leaves um, and then the wind will carry um, uh, the potential ferns you know the you know the new ferns all over the place now having said that I was walking with Jack down along the road outside of Bealton the cottage yesterday and noticed ferns coming up along the road so all these ferns are now growing at Bealton the cottage because of one little fern that I brought in so it's just amazing so the things that I really wished for seem to have come to me in complete and utter abundance I wished for ferns and now it's become a joke <laughs> it's ferns everywhere and different kinds of ferns you know so we've got this kind of fern look at the leaves on that and this kind totally so all these different um, variations look at that one down there that's a different one as well so look all over the land of course ferns love trees trees love ferns so you have this um, cohabitation going on you know but it's just so magical and it does show how you can really influence the landscape with a little bit of judicious planting so of course it goes all the way down that way now I said yesterday that I wanted to show you I wanted to show you the um, the oak tree the one that I took out of the watering can because it's so happy now you can see we've been having quite a drought because the spring well is continuing to flow but it's just a little trickle look more ferns <laughs> they're popping up everywhere <laughs> this year <laughs> look look at this new ones and all the way along the banks baby ones and then there's a totally different one over there as well Anyway, enough about ferns. Let's keep walking. So, yeah, I will have to keep walking to keep the paths open because... <laughs> Although, um, I don't need the lawnmower now for, for down around the land. It's only really for the driveway and for the paths up above, um, you know... Um, up near the cottage so it's all coming so lush and so green and my lovely little stream bed look isn't that gorgeous now I mean I can remember digging this out literally uh, um, no, sorry, I tell a lie. The digger dug out both the ponds and then this little, this little channel, which was actually quite a straight channel when he dug it, up to this old ditch. And what has happened over the course of time, the water has made its own beautiful curvature and formed this very natural stream so it looks gorgeous even when the water level is low you get to see all the stones and that's flowing into the silt pond down there so onwards and upwards we keep walking we'll get to this little oak tree now lots and lots of um, sorrel look at this 
This is wild sorrel, beautiful in salads. Now, there are some black currants coming on. These were just little bits that I stuck in over the course of the winter. Imagine that. And they're giving fruit already. Look, there's another little one. Look. So we're sort of heading straight, it almost not quite in a straight line, but in a fairly, you know, straight direction down towards the road. And the road is over there. Now, Hawthorne. Oh, there's, there's the boy. Look, he says, this is great. Mum's out walking. So I'm just going to breathe, literally breathe in some of this Hawthorne. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, it's heavenly. Heavenly. No. So, this is a beech tree. And this is a little beech tree. That's a little lime tree. And in front is a little ash. Always the last leaf. And you can see where I've been clearing around it. I try to keep um, the brambles and stuff back. The trees eventually shade them out. But look at my little oak tree. <laughs> look at this. Isn't she just gorgeous? 15 years. 15 years stuck in a metal watering can and now just so happy look you can look you can see how happy she is look at this have you ever seen a healthier looking oak tree <laughs> Now, of course, I did dig a great big hole for her and I made sure there was lots and lots of compost in there and lots of compost in there. And, of course, I don't stake because it makes them stronger. And, you know, a lot of what I've been saying all these years about not staking trees, I'm hearing that in videos as well. So it's good to know that people are picking up on the wisdom of the earth. You never see trees in the wild staked. And you have to ask yourself, why are those trees healthier? And the answer is simply that the more they have to kind of shake about in the wind the stronger the roots are because the roots have to really go down and cling on hard. So my beautiful oak tree, just beautiful. Oh, there's the boy sat over there looking the grass. <laughs> Watching the cars. <laughs> Look at my pine trees. Look at this. So I'm going to show you as well this pine tree. I've made a kind of a little path just by walking. This is very hidden now, look. So all these dogwoods in here. We've got willow, all the trees up there. My beautiful little oak tree over there. And there's a little exit to go through. But look at what's come up down here. Ajuka, look at that. Beautiful. So we're going to walk through here. Yes, Jackie boy, you like to sit there in that grass thinking nobody can see me and I can see these cars. Look at this. Look. How beautiful is that? How beautiful is that? Look at that one. Reaching up to the sky. Look at all the new growth on it. But where did I show you this tree? Because this tree is quite remarkable. Look, it was blown over in the wind. 
years and years ago when I planted it because of course it was only a tiny baby and once it started to grow up tall and bold there was a storm and the wind blew it over well I left it I just left it I thought let's see what happens and you can see it stayed fairly close to the ground for quite some time and then cleverly begun to grow up again. It's kind of windproof now because look at all the other trees. You see? So it's protected because of course when I planted that you could stand here and you could look down the road for about a mile and a half and when the wind came across the land, it was very violent to all the little trees that were growing here. So I've got myself bolt cutters. The next thing I'm going to do over the coming month or so is to take out all this damned barbed wire. I loathe the stuff. I loathe it. And of course this is my land, um, that's the ditch and that's the, that's the bank, so the bank is the dividing bit, you know. So, yeah. I love this land. I love it. And look, more Juca. Isn't that beautiful? The bees love that. And this lovely flower here. Um, can you see all the little yellow flowers? This is like a form of taggates. Now I'm not sure of the name of it. Watch this, watch. <laughs> Look at the pollen. <laughs> Look, watch. Oh, I'm being very childish now. And <laughs> Hope no pollen got on the lens. So... Now Jack's going out that way. Now this is a beautiful flower called, oh, that was a little bird. Little bird flew out from there. It's probably got a wee nest, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move away, all right? Because now there's lots of little nesting birds, hither and thither, and I don't want to disturb them or scare them off. There we go. Look, there's a little trail here. There's a little animal comes through here. Maybe a little fox. That's the little path we've come off. So we'll walk on through our little path. All the wild flowers. So we're just parallel with the road now. You see? So, we can go down that way, or we can go around this way. This is another tree, look, that got blown over a bit. But it's right as itself, and it's very healthy. Now, Jack, we'll go through this way. And that's another one of my favourite little babies that I cleaned up a little bit over the course of the winter so I got in there and I cut back lots of the brambles which should remain now fairly you know cut back because of course the trees shade in the ground and that's a green beach and I give that a little bit of a prune just to take the lower branches off a little bit they need the lower branches when they're very young but once they start to get established, um, they don't need those lower branches as much. The lower branches are to help stabilise the tree when it's growing. So, um, let me see now. We'll walk around this way. So we've got lots of different trees here and um, 
variegated dogwoods as well. You know, sometimes I call dogwoods gatoniasters. <laughs> Because I'm walking around and I, I don't, um, I'm sort of thinking to myself and uh, then when I am talking, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent conscious of talking. I'm just rambling really, you know. So we've got lots of little um, uh, pine cones which are coming from this tree. So much change in the actual earth here, you know. It's quite amazing the changes. There's the pond. I love this tree here. This is a copper beech, and this poor, poor little thing really was in the direct line of fire from the wind, which comes from the west over there, because there was no shelter. And it was a bit cruel of me to plant her just right on the edge of the pond, which they don't like. And, um, you know, on her own, having to struggle against the wind. But look at this beautiful shape that she's developed for herself in order to protect herself. Isn't that amazing? How clever, how clever is nature? I mean, look. See, she's kind of wrapped the branches around herself, almost like to keep warm and, and snug and secure. Isn't that amazing? And this beautiful, beautiful shape. And I've never, well, I've kind of cut little bits that have overhung the path, but I mean, generally I haven't touched it. And so here you have this extraordinarily beautiful little tree. A symbol of great courage actually. I think she's a courageous little tree. I should call her Boudicca after Queen Boudicca. <laughs> I should start giving my trees names. Now this of course was the old willow igloo that I built for my grandsons when they were tiny. They're 21 and 20 now. But look what's coming up in there. Hawthorn and ash. So it's been repopulated by trees. Now, um, this is going to click off once it gets to 29 and a half minutes or something. I'll just keep walking and talking. Walk and talk. See, I've parked the car down there in order to get a bit more walking in. Jack! Jack! Come on, don't even think about it. <laughs> he was thinking about it, wasn't he? Look at that. Isn't that a sight to behold? The sky's gone from that beautiful blue now into this stormy sort of um, Air Force blue. Amazing. Fuchsia coming out on the driveway, and birch and dogwood, great western cedar and ferns and raspberries and herb robert. I love the driveway because it's just packed full of plants and more and more keep coming. Like I've planted lots and lots but seems to have uh, encouraged even more. The more diversity you plant, the more seems to kind of come in on its own. Which goes totally against what the purists will say about only, you know, only plant indigenous. Look at the wild violets. Aren't they beautiful? And prolific. <laughs> 